Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2 of our creating a boss tutorial easy level in Minecraft. Last time we learned about different design factors that should distinguish a boss in Minecraft as well as working on setting up a health bar for our boss. We even managed to create a basic slime in MC Stacker to become our slime king. But something we didn't do last time was talk about killing our boss. And there's a reason for that. You see, when a slime dies in Minecraft, or most RPGs, it tends to split into multiple copies. And our King of Slimes is no different. Which is great, right? We get a free phase 2 that we don't even have to code in. But there's something you might notice right away that seems off. The health bar for our King Slime is still tracking a King Slime, but which one? They're all named King of Slimes. Well, my curious creepers, I'm glad you hopefully hypothetically asked. You see, Minecraft is a huge secret when it comes to the way split slimes are handled in the game. You wouldn't see this occur in normal gameplay, as slimes should never really have any attribute modifiers when you're playing vanilla, I guess except if you gave one a name tag. But for some reason, slimes are programmed to inherit some of their parent slimes' attributes, from seemingly their movement speed to even... You guessed it, their name. Now, it should be noted not everything is inherited due to the way slime stats are calculated. We, of course, bypassed the normal stat generation last time when we set our own max health, speed, and damage, creating our king slime. Normally, slimes do damage equal to their size and have health equal to their size squared. So, in this case, a size 2 slime would do 2 damage and have 4 health. So, why is this important? Well, it's great that we've effectively divided up the King of Slimes to fight smaller versions of it, but this causes some issues. Namely, our health bar is now tied to one of these four slimes at random. The children are significantly weaker than the parent, and the children will continue to split into smaller and smaller versions. Now, there are a few ways around this. Number one, you could simply ignore it. Set the drops for the parent of the King Slime to be whatever you want, and then the players will kill the main one, send a message to all nearby players saying, hey, you beat the boss, but his residual mass will continue to attack. Yeah, that makes sense. This lets the players still get the loot from killing the main boss, and the children are more of a clean up the leftovers situation. Alternatively, you could decide that splitting isn't something you want. In your boss death command chain, which we will start later, you could have a command that teleports all children slimes to the void once the main king of slimes dies, effectively making the slime never split in your player's eyes. This is pretty efficient, as you don't have to deal with any health bar shenanigans. Now, when I was originally creating this and writing out the small bits of script that I have to go off of when we make these videos, I had initially planned on talking about an option 3, which is to control the splitting of your slime via commands rather than letting the game do it natively. But the more I wrote about it and the more I tested it, the more I realized that that doesn't in line with this boss tutorial. After all, this is supposed to be an easy level tutorial. Having another phase with splitting that we'd have to control with varying different command blocks would probably be intermediate if not an expert level boss tutorial. So we may come back and revisit this situation later on in the future when we make those types of videos, but for now, we are actually going to pretty much go with option two and find a way to eliminate splitting altogether by killing off any of the children that the parent slime splits into before the players can tell. Okay, with splitting out of the way, what's actually next on our to-do list? Well, our step three to making a good boss that we talked about in our last video is to add minions or other threats for the player to deal with. We did this with the pumpkin when he entered his second phase and he spawned his minions. I was thinking having smaller slimes that don't necessarily hurt the player, but try and get close enough to deliver debuffs. Again, this is supposed to be an easy difficulty tutorial, so I don't want to do anything crazy just yet. So, for us to do that, we need to start talking about timers and phases. Again, we aren't going to do anything too advanced, but in order for us to trigger certain events happening with our boss, we need some way to keep track of different times. We could just check the health value of our boss, but we want certain attacks to feel more random than just waiting for certain health intervals. So, here comes the meat and potatoes of setting up the rest of our three steps. We need to talk about timers. Now, for some reason, even though Minecraft is literally, like, so 
old at this point. <laughs> There's still no native timer in the game. Not even a redstone one. And before you say it, yes, I know you can make redstone timers or hopper clocks, but the fact that there just isn't a timer block boggles my mind. But no matter, as there is one thing in Minecraft that is constantly changing that we can use to keep track of time, and that is ticks. Ticks are, for all intents and purposes, Minecraft's measurement of time. And each tick, by default, is 1 20th of a second. Ticks are happening constantly, and it's how certain things in Minecraft progress, like crop growth, animal growth, or even some enemy attacks. This all happens in the background, but there is a way for us to make use of ticks ourselves. For those of you that have watched my Pumpkin Boss videos, you know where this is going. We need to set up a dummy scoreboard that increases based solely on ticks. This isn't super complicated to do, but if you mess it up, then none of your boss phases will work correctly, so pay close attention. To start, all we need to do is create a new dummy scoreboard. So let's do slash scoreboard, objectives, add, and then we'll have to name this objective. We'll name this one King Slime Timer. And then when it's asking for criteria, we'll just set this to dummy. Unfortunately, Minecraft doesn't have a native criteria for checking time or timers, so we have to use dummy. If you want to know about scoreboards, you can check out my scoreboard basics video, but for now just know that the dummy criteria means the scoreboard will never change unless we give it external input, like checking if a player comes online, what time of day it is, or in our case, incrementing every tick. We don't need to give this a display name, so we can just hit enter. And now it's created. Now that we have our timer scoreboard, getting it to increase is actually really easy. Let's just put a new command block down, and we'll set it to be always active, on repeating. And then we basically want to add a score of 1 to our timer every tick, or every time the repeating command block is called, to effectively count our time. The way we can do this is by a slash scoreboard players add command and now you can see it's actually asking for a player name you see while scoreboards store all sorts of data they're actually player centric meaning i could have a different score of the same scoreboard than another player on the server this is a really smart way to keep scoreboards local as they were intended as a way to track players stats and compare them to other players but for operations like we're doing we want to set up a global scoreboard or a scoreboard that exists without being dependent on a player. And the way to do this is to give the scoreboard a player that doesn't really exist. I know this all sounds complicated, but trust me, in execution, it's actually quite simple. Because the command is asking for a player, let's just make one up. And that way we can tie all of our scoreboards to it without worrying if a real player is online or not. In my pumpkin tutorial, I named this fake player Dummy, as it's basically a dummy player, but that... <laughs> understandably confused some people, as the criteria for the scoreboard is also called dummy. So this time, our fake player will just be named world, because our scoreboard is supposed to execute commands for the whole world rather than just one player. You can realistically name this whatever you want, and Minecraft will accept it. Just make sure you stay consistent later on. Okay, so now that we have a fake player named world, we need to pick which scoreboard we're incrementing. That would be the King Slime Timer scoreboard we set up just a minute ago, so let's go ahead and enter that. And then finally, the numerical value of how high we want the score to be incremented. We want this to be equal to the amount of ticks that pass so we can time things better. So let's just put one. Reason we put one is because a repeating command block refreshes itself every tick. So every tick, our scoreboard will also increase by one. If we exit out, you can see that it is currently counting up in our scoreboard, but if we pause this for a second by setting this to needs redstone, we can go ahead and check the score of our fake player just to see that this is actually working by inputting scoreboard players get the name of our fake player and then the objective of the score we're trying to check. So if I go ahead and press enter here, you can see, sure enough, our world dummy player that doesn't really exist has 423 score on our King Slime timer. And voila, you've now just made yourself a timer in Minecraft. But Mudkip, I hear you frantically typing in the comments below, how can it be a timer if it just goes on forever? Ah, well to that viewer, I say, What is he doing? 
He's beginning to believe. We need to have some parameter to reset our timer back to zero. A limit, if you will. This is also really easy to do. Let's put another repeating command block here, and we'll put a new scoreboard command that's part of an execute command. Specifically, slash execute if score of our fake player world, and then the objective we want to check, king slime timer. We want to use matches. For now, we'll put 200 with two inclusive dots, and I'll explain this in just a second. And then our run command will be run scoreboard players set our fake player again the objective we're trying to change, and back to zero. We put 200 for now because 200 ticks is actually 10 seconds, and that's something quick enough for us to check. What this command block is actually doing is checking to see when our fake player world's score reaches above 200, which is what these two little dots mean, and as soon as it does, it will set that score back to zero. Now that our timer has an upper and lower limit, if I go ahead and turn this back on, we should be able to see when this number reaches 200, it should set back to zero. And there we go, just like that. That is 200 ticks, or 10 seconds. And just to ignore command spam from here on out, I am personally going to do game rule, man block output, and put this to false. Our command blocks are still working, but this basically says we will no longer see the output in chat, which is going to make this video a lot more watchable. Now that we have a basic timer, we can link any future phases or changes in our boss fight to this timer score. As a note here, having timers can significantly impact server lag, especially on low-end servers. I'll go over a way later to only keep this timer on while the boss is alive, and to shut it off when it dies, but you may want to look into other ways to reduce lag if you have a particularly laggy server. So, let's continue working on our next step, which is to add some smaller threats to the fight. I'll just go back into our command block and set our limit to be 400 for now, giving us about 20 seconds of time to test with. But in the end, I'll probably make the timer somewhere closer to a minute or two. So how do we actually trigger different events to happen using our new timer? Well, first up, we'll need an area close to where the players will be fighting your boss. I'm going to talk about an arena in the next video, but for now, we'll just keep this target as where we want to fight. So let's put down another repeating command block around here with enough space to create a chain if we want. Oh, and when you're designing these chains in your world, it's probably best to hide them underground so your players can't see them. Now, like I said, I want to summon small harmless slimes that can debuff the player when they get close enough. So let's head back to MC Stacker to set up a new summon command before we tie it to a timer. Okay. Back in MC Stacker, and just like before, we want to open a new tab and we'll go to the summon command. We'll also select slime in this dropdown, but we don't need to do most of the parameters we did for the king, like name and damage. We do want to make sure its size is set to zero though, and that its health and max health are both set to one, just to ensure that these slimes won't hurt us and can die in one hit. We aren't sure where we're summoning it yet, so we don't need to worry about the coordinates. Now, something I haven't mentioned on this page is this little passengers section down here. This section allows you to have mobs riding one another, like how a spider jockey works. Because we're looking for a way to debuff the player, the best way to do this is to attach an area effect cloud to a mob. That way, the mob can simply carry it to the player, and the player has to either avoid it or keep it at range. So if we click this little plus button to add a passenger here, you see it looks very similar to our summon command. Change this entity to be area effect cloud, and then we have to define the parameters in order to make this perfect for our use. Again, this is a great place to experiment on your own and try out things you like. But for me, I want to have the effect be of a weakness potion. And I've already tested some parameters that I think work great. I'll set the radius to 1.5. This is how big the cloud is. The duration is how long we want the cloud to persist. I'll set this to 200, or 10 seconds again. Sadly, the cloud won't despawn on its own when the slime is killed, but this just adds an extra obstacle for the players to avoid. Then, after 10 seconds, no matter what, the field will dissipate. Again, this is supposed to be an easier boss fight, so if players simply wish to avoid danger and are fast enough, I think they should be able to. Finally, I'll set the reapplication delay to 40,
40, or 2 seconds, so the player only continually gets weakness if they're in the cloud for more than 2 seconds. You can set the particle to be whatever you like, I'll just set mine to entity effect for now. And similarly, whatever effects you want, you can add here. Or you can simply use a potion. Make sure you copy the command once you're satisfied, and then we're good to go. Okay, so now we've designed our little debuff slimes, but we still need a way to spawn them in the fight. So, in this repeating command block, we need to only execute our command when the timer reaches a specific time. So, let's do slash execute if score of our fake player world of the objective king slime timer matches, and this time we're going to do exactly 200 without any dots, run, and then just paste our summon command that we just made from MC Stacker. Although, make sure when you paste it, it doesn't actually have the slash right here. If you just press the copy button on MC Stacker, it will probably copy the little slash before the summon, so you can just click and drag to copy what you want. Or come back in here and delete it retroactively. Now, for testing purposes, regardless if the boss is alive or not, whenever our timer reaches 200 ticks, or 10 seconds, it will summon our slime. And there we go! But there are a few tweaks we can do to make this better. For one, we'll actually need to give a location, because right now they're simply spawning in the command block and dying. This could change later, but for now I'll just take random coordinates from around the target, and input them here. Just like that. Then, spawning one slime doesn't quite seem like enough, so instead we can put a conditional chain command block behind our repeating one that will summon another slime at the exact same time just by pasting the same summon command from MC Stacker. Although make sure you also readjust your coordinates. But if we adjust our coordinates ever so slightly, then the slimes will spawn slightly far apart from each other. Okay, now that we have a few fighting commands under our belt, it's time to talk about tying all this together to make it happen automatically. And for that, We'll need the command that was universally the most confusing one from my Pumpkin boss tutorial. Right now we have a bunch of commands all doing things related to our boss fight, but nothing is actually tying them together right now unless they're actively in a chain with each other. Our timer just runs independently, and our boss health bar only leaves when I push a button. The best way to make this all feel like a real succinct boss fight is to tie everything to whether our boss is alive or not. Now we could simply put an execute command in the beginning of each command block to detect if we have an entity named King of Slimes, but that doesn't help us when we want to trigger something when the boss dies. So we need to create a scoreboard that checks if our boss is alive, and this time, I'm going to go through it step by step. First up, we need that new scoreboard. So let's do slash scoreboard objectives add. You guys should be getting the hang of this by now. And then we need a new name. This one we will call boss lives. It is the parallel to pumpkin lives from our pumpkin boss tutorial. And once again, there is no criteria to detect really the death of a mob or the, the life of a mob, I, I guess. You could detect the health, but... We'll just set it to dummy so we can control it ourselves. As an overview, this scoreboard is going to be a manual detection on whether or not our boss is alive. This is useful for us to be able to run certain commands only while the boss is alive, or only after it dies. Okay, now that we have the scoreboard, we need to find a place where we can change the score when the boss is alive. Luckily for us, there's a command chain for summoning our boss so we can place it right at the beginning of this. So after our initial summon, we're gonna have to bump some of these commands further down the chain. So I'll take this one out of here, place it into here, and now we can clear this command block out. So now our first command chain will be slash scoreboard, players, set, and then we'll just use that dummy player again that we named world, because we can use them for everything. And now we wanna set boss lives to one. This way, as soon as the players press the button, which will summon the boss, we have changed our scoreboard to let the game know our boss is alive. So, now that we have this score, or living state, we can start attaching things to it. We want to start by attaching our timer so it's only active when the boss is quote-unquote alive. If we head back to our timer command block, we can turn it into an execute command by adding execute if score, then our fake player world, the objective boss lives, and we'll say matches one. And then we'll have to put run to run the rest of the command. Now, even though this is set to always active, 
it will only ever work when our boss is triggered to be alive. Which means, without changing anything, our weakening slimes will also only spawn when the boss is alive, since they're actually based off our timer. You can see all the chains start to fit together. If we want, we can even come over to our boss bar command that ties the boss's health to the big boss bar, and add in if score world once more, boss lives, matches, one, just like before. And this time we don't need a run because store is also part of execute. This whole boss bar tying to the health thing will only ever try and run when our slime king is alive. This helps reduce bloat on the server. For now, this is all we need to do while the boss is alive. Maybe we'll have some more attacks later, but right now everything is going to happen as soon as our boss is set to living, which happens after this command block. Now we need a way of checking if our boss is dead. So let's go ahead and finally start our boss death chain. In this very first command block, we should be checking if our boss has died, and then we want to set boss lives back to zero to let the game know it's dead. So we want this to be a repeating command block, and we have to come up with a way to check if our boss is dead. Now, it's actually pretty difficult to determine when an entity dies in Minecraft. So instead, we can use our living scoreboard with a combination of distance detection to determine if the boss is quote-unquote dead. Now, because we're using slimes, this would get a little complicated, you know, with the whole splitting thing, but because we've decided to not pursue the splitting mechanic, this should actually be fine for a one-time death. And then, of course, we'll have a command at the end of this chain to teleport the split slimes elsewhere. So the way this works with all bosses is to do execute if score, and then our target player of world for boss lives matches one. So right now it's saying this repeating command block will always execute as long as our boss is alive or technically has been summoned by someone clicking that button. And then we can add the unless parameter where we want to say entity at E. And then just like before, we want to search for our king slime. So we'll do name equals and then in quotes king of slimes exactly like we've written it before. And then finally our run command which is what we said earlier, we want to set our scoreboard players set our fake player world of boss lives back to zero. Basically, this is saying the moment that our boss dies, because this is a repeating command block, so it's checking every tick, boss lives will still be set to one, but there should no longer be a living entity named King of Slimes. So this command block will change it, boss lives, to zero. Now, after this is when we can put our cleanup commands. Remember our manual switch for turning the health bar off? Well, now we can add that to a conditional chain command block that does it after the boss is dead. So we'll go ahead and grab this command, copy it, come into this command block, which will set to be an always active conditional chain, and we'll just simply paste it like that. Now, remember, this will only trigger after our boss is dead. So boss lives, we have a command block that shows us the health bar. After boss is quote unquote dead, according to this command block, a conditional block that says, okay, turn off the health bar, or more accurately, like we talked about in the first video, remove players from the health bar. And for now, that's everything tied up with a nice bow. Eh, we can get rid of this. We'll still want this for testing purposes. But we now have our summoning chain that tells the game when the boss is alive, and then all of our other command blocks will spring to life as the boss is summoned. Then we have a command chain checking for the death of the boss, where it tells the game the boss is dead and cleans up everything left over. Our biggest issue now is just that our slime does actually technically still split, causing multiple entities with the same name to exist. When it comes to slime death in Minecraft, it's kind of a complicated thing, where there is a few ticks between the slime actually dying and then splitting into children, where it's not sort of an instantaneous effect. If it was, we could simply use our boss death command chain here to check as soon as the king slime has died, any subsidiary slimes, whether they're named king of slimes or not, can be teleported to the void. But because there's a little bit of a delay, we can't just put this in a command chain. Instead, we'll need another repeating command block here that we'll set to be repeating and always active, which will simply check if the slime boss should be dead, then teleport any other king of slimes to the void. And the way we can do that, although not foolproof, is with an execute if score, and then we want to do world once again, 
boss lives matches zero. And then we want to say if there is an entity alive. So we'll do if entity at E. And then once again, we'll do name equals king of slimes. And then for our run command, what we want to do is just teleport any of these extra slimes to the void. So the players don't have to worry about them. They don't show up in the health bar, anything like that. So here we can do a TP at E, again, name King of Slimes, because there could be multiple at this point. And we'll just set these coordinates as negative 65 should be the void. There we go. So now technically, if the King of Slimes is alive for any reason, whether or not it has been summoned, and the death marker is set to zero, or boss lives is set to zero, this will teleport any other Kings of Slimes to the void. This will be easier if I just show you. So before we wrap up the video, let's do a whole test on everything to make sure everything is linked. Because right now we have everything going through these command chains, except for a couple extraneous things. So if I press this button right here, that should in fact summon our boss, which will then in turn start our timers. And when our timer reaches 200, that will spawn two weak little slimelings with the area cloud effect, which of course do weaken the player as they get too close. And everything seems to be working fine. If I hit the king of slimes, our health bar is still updating in real time, and the timer is still going, which will spawn more slimes. This is great. And sure enough, if we go over to the kill boss command block and click that, you should see that the slime dies, and then technically some of the slimes get <laughs> yeeted into the void. Now, the reason I said earlier this isn't foolproof is because this is working as fast as it can, and technically there's now a whole bunch of slimes that are named King of Slimes as clones, so it's kind of getting confused on how to teleport them to the void, how quickly to teleport them to the void, so on and so forth. There might be more elegant solutions in the future, but for now, this works. Our slime has died, any loot will have been dropped exactly where it died, and of course we still have these little slime links to deal with. But there we go. So that's gonna just about do it for today's video. Step three of adding minions was complete, as well as going over timers and turning our boss's experience into a closed loop for our players. I know some of the scoreboard commands can be quite dense, so I'm doing my best to explain them lightly, but don't forget you can head to my paste bin in the description below to simply copy and paste the commands as you need. Next time, we're going to talk all about the final steps of making a boss, as well as setting up a small arena to fight it in. These videos take a ton of work to make. So if you found this one helpful, make sure you leave a like and stay subscribed to be notified when the next part goes out. Until next time, guys. See ya!